now we are going to study about the the object oriented concepts right so as you people know that this the object oriented programming concept is a uh, the third generation that is a uh, end of the third generation language right and uh, nowadays uh, the all the people uh, you people you, you people are very familiar with the the object oriented programming that is a very important is a java v a very popular language which is a internet based language so which is going to be useful for the internet browsing right and this object oriented programming concepts are are the <coughs> uh, languages which are uh, 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 developed in the fourth generation of the computers right and uh, Uh, among one is uh, the object oriented programming in the development in software uh, technology continue to be dynamic nowadays okay now new tools and techniques are announced in the quick succession this has forced the software engineers and industry to continuously look for new approaches to software design and the development and uh, they are becoming more and more critical in view of the increasing complexity of the software system as well as highly competitive nature of the industry these rapid advances uh, appear to have created a situation of crisis within the industry so they they added uh, how to represent a real time entities so to a problem in system design how to design a systems with uh, open interfaces how to ensure the reusability and extensibility of the modules and how to develop a modules that are tolerant uh, to any changes in future how to improve the quality of the software how to manage the time schedule how to industrialize the software development process many software products are either not finished or not used or else are delivered with a major errors right so so software has been evaluated uh, well known writer in the field of artificial intelligence compared the evaluation of the software technology to the growth of a tree like a tree the software evolution had distinct phases of layers of growth these layers were built up one by one over the last five decades with each layer representing in the improvement over the previous one okay however the analogy fails if we consider the life of these layers in software systems each of the layer continues to be functional whereas in the case of trees only one uppermost layer is functional so so in the, in the layers of computer software first is uh, in the first generation of the computers the machine language was evolved which uses zeros and ones to represent right and it is understandable to the machine because the computer is an electronic device which works on the principle of digital uh, zero and the one that is a off and on switch that is why the people started writing the programs in machine level language <coughs> then next level is due to the too many disadvantages which we are going to found in the the machine level language assembly level language have been evaluated after assembly level language which uses a mnemonic as a language to represent symbolic names to represent some operations and instructions right which is also a machine dependent language right so assembler is a translator which is going to be used to convert the assembly level language into the machine level language then the uh, procedure oriented programming language are also called as high level language right like pascal c <coughs> assembly level language program like 8085 and 8086 uh, microprocessor programs right and uh, procedure oriented programming language are the one high level languages right the c uh, pascal fortran cobol are all i level language they are the third generation languages that is the reason why c is called as a middle level language okay <clears throat> and they all need the translators as a compiler to translate i level language into the machine level language 
and now we are going to study the the object oriented concepts how these features are implemented in a c++ right c++ programming supports all the features of object oriented programming language actually it is an incremented version of a c language okay and it is developed by a person called as a b journey startup in 1979 he initially called the new language as a c with classes because the incremented version of a c is a c++ okay so why he called c with classes means all the features which supported by c is also features of c++ only feature that has been added will be the the classes and objects that's why so he named that language as a c with classes however in 1983 the name was changed to c++ the plus plus as you people know that it is a incremented version of a c language right <coughs> incremented version of a c language and uh, uh, that is the version why uh, incremented version of a c language we named as a c++ with advent of the language such as c structured programming became very popular and was the main te uh, main technique in the 1980s structured programming was a powerful tool and enables the programmers to write moderately complex programs fairly and easily however as the program grew larger even the structured approach failed to show the des desired results in terms of bug free easy to maintain and reusable programs <coughs> this object oriented programming is an approach to program organization and development that attempts to eliminate some of the pitfalls of the conventional programming methods by incorporating the best of structured programming features with several powerful new concepts it is a new way of organizing and developing programs and has nothing to do with any particular language However, not all languages are available to implement the hoop concepts easily, right? We use a C++, the language which is going to support both object-oriented programming as well as the the uh, other procedure-oriented programming languages also. <coughs> And uh, C++ is an extension of C language in that most C programs are also C++ programs. C++ is an opposite opposite to C which is going to support the object oriented program so object oriented programming concepts uh, concepts a uh, uh, system is the it is we try to model real world objects right most real world objects are um, the the uh have internal parts that is a data members and member functions interfaces we call it as a interfaces we call it as a the data of member functions that enables us to operate them okay then the object oriented system is going to divide what are known as a objects and it gives more emphasis in the data rather than the procedures right whereas in procedure oriented program it gives more importance for the procedures rather than the uh, procedures rather than the data so here in object oriented program it gives more uh, on the data rather than the procedures <coughs> and in the object oriented programming data structures are designed such that they characterize the objects functions that operate on the data of the of an object or tied together in a uh, the data structure data is hidden in the uh, object oriented programming and cannot be accessed by external functions and objects may communicate with each other through the functions that is a we call it as a member functions and the member functions and data members are the one which are defined in the classes don't have the confusion that what is a data member for new world and what is it member function is a new world no they are the same functions and the variables 
but uh, the data members are the one which are declared variables declared under the the class are called as the data members and um, the member functions are the one which are going to declared under the class they are called as a member functions <coughs> okay then uh, the everything uh, as uh, and uh, new data and functions can be easily, easily added whenever it is necessary you know in case of object oriented programming and it follows a bottom up approach in the program design bottom up approach means all your functions are defined in the the below the function all your uh, functions are defined in the top of the program and your main program is present at the bottom of the program when it is going to follow bottom up approach we call it as it is a the execution starts from the bottom since your main heading is present at the bottom of the uh, uh, program right so you know that c and c++ compiler always searches for the main to start its execution the variables that hold data are called as a data members right the functions should operate of it and that data are called as a member functions there are two parts in an object one is a data member the other one is a functions <clears throat> in an object oriented programming the focus is mainly on the creating the objects to accomplish a task and not creating the procedures or the functions okay in hopes that is object oriented programming the data is tied morely in the functions and does not allow the data we to flow freely around the entire programming making the data more secure data is hidden and cannot be easily accessed by external functions compilers implementing the object oriented program does not allow unauthorized functions to access the data thus enabling enabling the data security that means some of the member functions which you are going to declare under the the class right only the class uh, variables are accessed by the members of the member functions of the same class okay the other uh, unauthorized functions or the non member functions are not allowed to access these variables that is how we are going to give the security for the data only the associated function can operate on the data there is no change of bug scripting into the program the main advantage of this object oriented programming is to capability to model the real world problems as i told it uh, follows a bottom up approach in program design that is nothing but uh, it is going to access uh, the main program is present below the function so your compiler c++ cell compiler starts your execution and moves on to the top okay from bottom to the top that's why it is called as a bottom up approach in program design so here uh, one more very very important thing is so uh, all the functions are going to communicate with each other okay data are going to uh, the, the the variables or the data is going to communicate with their own functions right and in turn these functions are going to communicate with each other and whenever the object is created the memory will be shared same memory will be shared by all the functions but the <coughs> the memory uh, is common to uh, the memory is common for all the functions okay so that is a one very important point you must remember because the they will not uh, the variable separate memory location is allocated but uh, the for the functions there will be they will uh, common memory location is allocated for all the member functions in the class okay so then and that is one property uh, where we can learn about the the very very important that is the sharing of the memory uh, when the object is created and um, the when we are going to create a object that object is also called as a class variable the class variable is used to access the methods or the data members of the same class okay then identifying the objects and assigning the responsibilities to these objects
ओके ऑब्जेक्ट्स कम्युनिकेट टू ईच अदर बाय सेंडिंग द मैसेजेस 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 आर रिसीव्ड बाय द मेथड और द फंक्शंस ओके टू एन ऑब्जेक्ट and that is called as a message passing property we can call it right then uh, we have the see there how the uh, we have the object a object b and object c how these functions are going to communicate with each other you can see there how the functions are going to communicate with each other okay then the whenever we are going to create a, the um, object right that memory a separate memory is allocated for each and every object but the common memory for all the member functions of the class okay so member functions of the class will have the same memory they will uh, share the common memory okay then so what are the basic concepts of your object oriented programming very very important point and they will last for 10 marks also this is a you have to learn the basic uh, object oriented programming concept that is a um, object classes data abstraction data encapsulation right <clears throat> data hiding inheritance polymorphism dynamic binding and um, message passing okay these are the nine properties or the concepts of object oriented programming and uh, <coughs> let me take one by one the first one is the object right and the classes so why we have taken the object and classes together because the classes are the one <coughs> classes are the are user defined data types on which objects are going to be created sometimes these objects are also called as a the class variables objects with similar properties and methods are grouped together to form a class so class is a collection of objects object is an instance of the class objects are also called as real time entities in an object oriented system they may represent a person or a place or a bank account or table of data or any of them item that the program has to handle they may also represent the user defined data such as vectors time and list programming problem is analyzed in terms of objects and the nature of communication between them program object should be chosen such that they match closely with the real world objects objects take up the space in memory and have an associated address like a record in pascal or a structures in c so you people are familiar in uh, structures and c right your class is also it is something like a structures only but uh, there will be a difference in uh, the object oriented programming group of variables defined by the class and the procedure oriented programming variables grouped by the structure even in the object oriented program also supports um, the c++ programming as also supports the structures when a program is executed the objects are going to interact by sending the messages to one another for example if a customer and account are two objects in a program the customer object may send a message to the um, account object requesting for the bank balance each object contains data and code to manipulate the data objects can interact without having to know the details of each other's data or the code it is sufficient to know the type of message accepted and the type of the response returned by the objects although different authors represent uh, them differently right so uh, uh, data uh, that is a classes when you come to the classes just we have mentioned the objects contain the data and code to manipulate the, that data the entire set of the data and code of an object can be made a user defined data type with the 
help of a class. In fact, objects are variables of the type class. Once a class has been defined, we can create any number of objects belonging to that class. Each object is associated with a data type class with which they are created. A class is thus a collection of objects or similar type. For example, mango, apple, orange, or the members of the class fruit. Okay. Classes are user defined data types and behaves like the built in types of the programming language. The syntax used to create an object is no different than the syntax used to create an integer object in C. In fruit, as been defined as a class, and then the statement. So, example fruit mango will create an object mango belonging to the class fruit because mango is a fruit. Okay. Next is the data abstraction and the encapsulation. The abstraction, the wrapping of the data and functions into a single unit is called as an encapsulation, right? That also called as a data encapsulation we are calling. Okay. And data encapsulation is the most striking feature of the class because both the variables and member functions are declared in a single unit called as a class. The data is not accessible to the outside world and only uh, those functions which are wrapped in the class can access it. Sorry. So that means that is uh, only the member functions which are present in the class. Uh, they can access it. These functions provide the interface between the object's data and the program. This insulation of the data uh, from the direct access by the program is called as a data hiding or information hiding. So why it is a property called as a data hiding and data encapsulation? That is because <coughs> That is because data hiding is a property where we are going to have the in a class three sections of the data, private, public and the protected section of the data. So some of the variables declared under the private section. So those variables are accessible only to the member functions of the same class. That is the reason why they are called as the the property called as a data hiding property. Okay. Then data abstraction, when you come to the data abstraction, it is refers to the act, uh, to the act representing the essential features without including the background details of our background details or the explanations. For example, the classes use a concept of abstraction are defined as a list of abstract attributes such as the size, weight and cost and functions to operate these attributes. They encapsulate all the essential properties of the objects that are to be created. The attributes are some, sometimes called data members because they hold information. The functions that operate on these data are sometimes are called as a methods or member functions. Since the classes use the concept data abstraction, they are also known as abstract data types. Okay, so uh, for example, if you take a bank, they will not ask which bank, how many customers are there, what is a transaction, and all right. So uh, simply, they are going to give a name and uh, what are the transactions. Uh, normally, is the standard transactions that the customer is going to perform. The those will be the attributes of that bank. Okay, they will not ask any history of the bank or how it has been developed, who, who found that bank, right? And who is the chairman, who is the president, all information is not at all required, right? So, for example, you take uh, how to translate then finally display them on the screen. So, for example, you take exam, uh, C plus okay? So, LO, or C out is the, the output object which is used to display messages on the screen. So C out uh, to uh, lesser than symbol is used represent without leaving the space that is called as an insertion operator. Okay, insertion means something it is going to insert it on the screen. 
okay the loc plus plus is okay whatever we are going to give it in the double quotes it is going to be displayed as it is on the screen all the logic and uh, even almost all the sim, uh, things are will be same like a c even then only uh, and even the all the input output functions and control structure also can be worked on c plus plus but apart from that c we are going to use uh, the c plus plus advanced features like a c in and c out are the two input output methods which are used to display to input the data and to display the data so endl is a operator which is going to end of the line and return zero here you don't need to understand how c out display the text on the user screen you need to only know the public interface and the underlying implementation of the c outs is free to change so as i already discussed uh, the data encapsulation it is also sometimes called as a data hiding that is because the variables which are declared under the class are accessible only to the member function of the same class okay wrapping up of data and functions into the single unit is known as a data encapsulation data is not accessible to said world only those functions which are wrapped in the class can access it okay next property is called as a inheritance property so the inheritance is a process by which objects of one class acquire the properties of the object of one another class okay so it supports the concept of hierarchical classification for example you take bird robin is a part of the class flying bird which again a part of the class bird the principle behind is that you are going to derive this as a flying birds and non flying birds right so division into each derived classes shares the common characteristics with the class flying bird and the non flying bird okay and flying birds will have its own attributes and non flying bird will have its own attributes okay so when you come to the flying bird robin and swallow are the flying birds and non flying birds are penguin and the kiwi okay and again the kiwi will have even though it is a non flying bird it is having its own few attributes and uh, penguin is also a non flying bird but it is having its own feature it is own characteristics that is a different attributes we call it okay so in object oriented programming the concept of inheritance provides the idea of reusability this means that we can add additional features to an existing class without modifying it this is possible by deriving a new class from the the existing class the new class will have the the features or the combined features of both the classes the real uh, appeal and the power of this inheritance mechanism is that it allows the programmer to reuse a class that is almost but not exactly what he wants and to tailor the class in such a way that it does not introduce any undesirable side effects into the rest of the classes note that each sub class defines only those features that are unique to it without the use of the classification each class would have to explicitly include all of its features okay so derived classes are also called as a child class and the the parent class the one the base class which is going to use to create a sub class is also base class super class are the parent class these are the with three names you are going to call and whereas the the class one is is going to derived with the base class is called as a derived class child class or sub uh, derived class child class or the the extended class or the derived class sub class we can call it okay so writing it allows the user to reusable code object can inherit the characteristics from other objects so come to the polymorphism 
that is a very important uh, uh, object oriented concept okay the word polymorphism is uh, derived from the greek for term it means that ability to take more than one form an operation may exhibit different behavior in different instances the behavior depends upon the types of data used in the operation for example consider the operation of addition for two numbers the operation will generate a sum if the operation are strings then operation would produce a third string by concatenation the process of making an operator to exhibit different behavior in different instances is known as operator overloading okay that is also another feature polymorphism plays a very important role allowing the objects to having different uh, internal structures uh, to share the same external interface okay this means that general class of operations may be accessed in the same manner even though specific actions associated with each operation may differ polymorphism is extensively used in implementing the inheritance say for example you take shape draw is a main class right and in that that we are going to create a circle as an object rectangle is an object and the triangle is another object so all are belongs to the draw class itself main base class these are all the the derived classes or sub classes or the child classes right so that is a polymorphism so single function name can be used to handle the different numbers and different types of arguments so circle will have only radius one parameter right rectangle will have two parameters length and breadth a triangle will have the different parameter base and height of a triangle right like this this is something similar to the particular word having the several different meanings depending upon the context using a single function name to perform different types of task is called as a function overloading or it is also called as a polymorphism then next property you come for the dynamic binding okay dynamic means it always whatever the word whenever you use a dynamic it always refers to the the execution that is run time whatever the things that is going to happen during run time it is always called as a dynamic okay dynamic binding dynamic memory allocation right dynamic um, um memory allocation dynamic binding right and uh, 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 etc okay by dynamic binding is uh, refers to the linking of a procedure call to code to be executed in response to the call dynamic binding is also known as a late binding because that binding takes place only after the compilation that is why that is during the run time that is why it is called as a late binding this means that the code associated with a given procedure call is not known until the time of the call at the run time that is the reason why it is called as a late binding it is associated with a polymorphism and inheritance a function call associated with a polymorphic reference depends on the dynamic types of that reference so so uh, and then uh, static it binding means that the code associated with the function call is linked at the compilation time it is also called as a early binding or compile time polymorphism whereas dynamic binding it is also since it is uh, takes place at the run time it is also called as a late binding or run time polymorphism dynamic binding means that the code associated with a function call is linked at run time it is also called as a late binding or the run time polymorphism okay so dynamic binding is a connecting the function called the function code to be executed in response to the call that function is known only to the uh, only during the run time okay but uh, execution time 
so that function uh, as the compile time we don't know that function is exist right so that is the reason why it is called as a then come to the message passing the objects are communicate with one another by sending and receiving the information okay so that is the the message passing is also very important property where the objects oriented program consists of set of objects and communicate with each other the process of programming in an object oriented programming language therefore involving the the basic steps first what we have to do is we have to create a ob classes that define objects and their behavior second point is creating the objects from class definitions and third is we are going to establishing a communication among the objects objects communicate with each one another by sending and receiving the information much the same way as the people are going to pass the message to one another the concept of message passing makes easier to talk about a building the system that directly model or simulate the real world counterparts or real on objects okay message for an object is a request or the execution of the procedure and therefore will invoke a function or a procedure in the receiving object that generates a desired result message passing involves specifying the same name of the object the name of the function and the information to be sent see objects have a life cycle they can be created and destroyed communication with an object is visible as long as they are going to align say for example if you take a employee salary and name of the employee so the object is employee message is salary so information goes to the who person name name of a person okay so this is how different concepts of the object oriented programming so that is the object class okay data encapsulation data hiding data abstraction message passing dynamic binding then um, polymorphism inheritance these are the nine very important points of the the object oriented programming concepts okay in that the inheritance is a very very important property which is going to allow the user to reuse the existing code 